Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today he would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Let us read together sections of Psalm 107, responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathered them out of the lands. Some went down to the sea in ships. They beheld the works of the Lord. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose. mounted up to heavens and fell back to the depths. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He stilled the storm to a whisper. Then were they glad because of the calm. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. 
Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the heavens being shouted for joy? Or who, sh- or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Please stand if you are able. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders? You stretched forth your right hand. The earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself. O Lord, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an, accept- at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, 
as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. <coughs> we have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. Empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one, to one another, Who is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of the Lord. Be Please be seated. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Last week, the Gospel of Mark presented us with a series of parables and analogies that spoke of the kingdom of God in very agricultural and na nature-oriented terms, about people sowing seeds and birds making their homes, in the large branches of the plants that sprung forth from those seeds. This Sunday, we are not presented with any parables or analogies, but we stay very much in the natural world. We find ourselves on a boat with Jesus and his disciples, and we find ourselves caught in a raging and dangerous storm that threatens to sink the boat. Now, it's worth pausing for a moment to consider the general relationship that Jewish people of this time had with the sea. By and large, they were not seafaring people. They were nothing like their neighbors to the north of the Greek Hellenistic world, a culture that was able to spread far past the islands of Greece out into the entire Mediterranean in large part because the Greeks were a great seafaring people, spreading their language and culture through trade and commerce, having periods of military dominance with their vast navy. We do not find this in the Jewish world. Despite Israel being on the coast of the Mediterranean, there is no vast trade network or commerce. The life of the sea is lived primarily by fishermen. In Jewish thought and culture, the sea is regarded as a great primordial force, a source of great chaotic power, where the Leviathan and other creatures reside. Just look at our first reading from Job. Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? when I made the clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band. Here the sea is presented as this living force birthed from some great primordial womb. God even clothes the sea, making it garments of clouds and swaddling bands of darkness. 
But it's not just enough to bring forth the sea and to clothe the sea. It still has to be contained, has to be subdued. God continues saying to Job, and who prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. You get the sense from this that without God's intervention, without God's setting firm boundaries, the sea would have complete and total free range, rising and covering wherever its will desired. Not just Job, consider Noah. It's a great flood, water unleashed, that acts as the great reset of the world. It's only through God's guidance and providence that Noah builds his ark. Consider Jonah and the whale. Jonah is commanded by God to go to Nineveh to be God's prophet. Instead, Jonah tries to flee God's presence by sailing to a different city. He's then cast overboard by the sailors during a raging storm and swallowed by a giant fish. It's only through God's command that the great fish deposits Jonah on dry land. Throughout all of this, we see the same theme, the dangerous and unruly sea being brought under control and submission by and through God's great power. We may think we have a different relationship with the sea than those first disciples of Christ, and in many ways, we do. We travel its waters, sending more commerce and trade across the world than in any other time in history. We harvest its riches and vast resources for our benefit. We build houses on its shores to admire its views and play in its waves for our amusement. But just as God asked Job, we can ask ourselves, what garments have we adorned the sea in? Oil spills? A garbage patch twice the size as Texas? Have we prescribed boundaries for it and set bars in its path? Or are we still frighteningly vulnerable to rising sea levels, tidal waves, and superstorms? I don't know about you, but as much as I love the sea and feel comfortable with the sea, there is still under its beautiful and idyllic surface a raw, chaotic power. It does not take much imagination on my part to feel the trembling, to hear, the terror, to be afraid as the disciples are afraid. And we must remember these are not novices of the water. They are fishermen, born into families of fishermen, raised to be fishermen. Of all the Jewish people Jesus could have called to follow him, these are the most comfortable with the sea. And yet even they are brought to fear and trembling. Even they cannot forget how small one can feel when confronted face to face with the raw power of nature. Last week's gospel showed us what the kingdom of God is like. This week's gospel shows us what the Lord of that kingdom is like. It is a reminder to us that we live in God's creation that as Paul's letter to the Romans says, all creation groans in anticipation. All the earth waits for and recognizes the one who will set all things right. Here is how St. Ephraim the Syrian describes the moment in the storm. The ship carried Jesus' humanity, but the power of his divinity carried the ship and all that was in it in order that he might show that even his humanity did not require the ship. 
instead of the planks which a shipwright put together and fastened, he, like the architect of creation, made the waters firm and joined them together solid, solidly under his feet. The architect of creation, the Lord and King, the one who not only saves our souls, but makes the whole creation new. Over the weeks and months of this summer season, as our world opens back up, I know many of us will be spending time outside. Some will go to the river. Is that close? Is that close? Some to the sea. Some will trek up into the mountains. Wherever you go, I invite you to take in the wonder, the majesty, and the power of God's creation. To remember who set the foundations of the world and who adorns it in such beauty, and who alone truly commands it. As you stand in the beauty of creation, I invite you to ponder in your heart these words from St. Augustine. Christ is asleep in you. What do I mean? I mean you have forgotten his presence. Rouse him then. Remember him. Let him keep watch within you. Pay heed to him. A temptation arises. It is the wind. It disturbs you. It is the surging of the sea. This is the moment to awaken Christ and let him remind you of those words. Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Amen. Please stand if you're able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. Long peace and good faith. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Let your way be known upon earth. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Create in us clean hearts, O God. Amen. 
O Lord. Make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This time, I invite you to offer up your own intercessions, prayers, and thanksgivings, either silently or out loud. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.